What's going on everyone? Dots Gaming from DotsGaming.com here and on behalf of Nemesis Esports, I want to bring you guys a Magic Dragonite PvP build for the Elder Scrolls Online Markarth patch. So if you guys are familiar with my website, DotsGaming.com, this is the Enduring Flame PvP build. And this has, I've had videos on my channel in the past for this build, but today we are going to be deploying the video update for this build that's on my website on the nemesis esports channel today now if you guys have been familiar with this build from me in the past it hasn't really changed very much from stone thorn to mark karth um, i tried out a couple different things to see if there was anything new i really wanted to work with but honestly i was pretty satisfied with the way that the build ran last patch and trying it in battlegrounds this patch i have been really still enjoying it it's still been performing very very well um, i have tried though to stick and stay away from using too many proc sets. So if you guys are looking for just a hyper meta mega proc set builds, this is not going to be that for you. It's still going to be Grothdar, Elfbane combination. Um, I'm really not a huge fan of playing with a crap load of proc sets. I like to use maybe one in the monster helm spot. That's just what I find the most fun and engaging in terms of gameplay. But uh, and I know a lot of other people are looking for, you know, not proc set. Uh, set heavy builds and so hopefully this can you know kind of fill that void for you now like i always have said in my build videos in the past is just what i like what i use and what is working for me um obviously if you guys would like to run something else go ahead and feel free to customize this to you know your desires and however you'd like now this is going to look very familiar if you've seen this build from me in the past and the first set you're going to have is grothdar this is the set that the build is basically centered around uh, when you deal damage to an enemy within eight meters you have a 10 percent chance to create lava pools that swirl around you dealing flame damage to all enemies enemies within eight meters one second uh, every second for 10 seconds occurring every 10 seconds so it's basically will have 100 percent uptime whenever you were within range now there's been two notable changes to the set from the past and that is that the you have a kind of like a range on it now you have to actually be within the eight meters to deal the damage to get the set to proc and the it was like basically proccing burning too often in the past which basically resulted in too much sustain from the set and so i think when that happened a lot of people kind of wrote this off as well now it won't be that great for sustain anymore and it actually is still incredibly good um even with that you know quote unquote change it's still it provides a lot of sustain through a lot of burning ticks from the flame damage ticking every second especially considering we do run charged on our front bar so we are still able to proc burning a ton from this set and honestly the set not proccing until you're within range i didn't really make a big difference for me i think actually it made the usability arguably better since it's not randomly proccing if i'm light attacking somebody from range and you know it procs and actually goes off when i need it to go off so Still a big fan of the set and still works really, really well for Magic DK. And the reason that the set is so good is because it is paired with Elfbane. So Elfbane gives a line of maximum magic and two lines of spell damage, and it increases the duration of your flame dots by five seconds. This makes a lot of our damage over time skills from the Magic Dragon Knight kit incredibly potent. It also makes Grothdar have that 100% uptime when you are within range of your opponents. And it was a set that I had slept on in the past, but when I really gave it a, a, an honest try, I, I really did fall in love with it. Like I said, it pairs really, really well with Grothdar. It allows me to run Burning Talons again, which is one of my favorite Magic of Dragon Knight skills. Makes it actually extremely powerful. And so uh, for that reason, I absolutely love this set. Now, we have changed up one thing, though, from... Uh, last patch is built and we are now running one piece of trainee so trainee just gives us 1400 health i am still running the other two sets that i was running uh last patch on this build so i you know and if you guys had watched this from me in the past you know that i was running four pieces of endurance but then when they changed trainee to actually have a one set piece i was able to take off that dead slot of endurance that i had and run this instead which basically makes my health pool super juicy we're sitting at 31 and a half k maximum health which in this heavy proc set meta is very very good now we wouldn't be a elf bane grothdar build if we weren't running the malakath's band of brutality this thing just makes grothdar absolutely chunk people on top of you know boosting the rest of our damage by a really high amount this also is a heavy armor build so it's really not the end of the world if we cannot offensively crit so having this as our uh you know, mythic item set is a really, really good thing to have. It is one of the strongest one piece bonuses in the game. And uh, it's we are running it on the build just for all of the benefits that it provides. Again, we don't crit very much. 
we do have Grothdar dealing a big portion of our damage, so this boosts that up a lot. And because we just have a lot of dots ticking at once, and like I said, those aren't critting very frequently, this just gives us a really, really big percent uh, damage increase. Now, we are still running three pieces of endurance uh, for our single piece of jewelry and on our weapons, giving us 1,900 health and 611 health recovery. Now, because we are a Dragon Knight using a lot of Draconic power skills and we are in heavy armor, we are sitting unbuffed on the back bar at tw uh, 2,045 health recovery that is absolutely huge amounts of hp recovery it's it's fantastic gives a lot of defensive potency i know a lot of people have asked um you know dots is health recovery really that good is it is it really that great and honestly i believe it is ever since healing was neutered back in the gray more patch for certain characters especially um my dragon knights i have found health recovery at least for me to be a really effective defensive stat and for that reason, endurance is, is endurance is also just super stat like uh, dense between the amount of health that it gives and the sheer amount of health recovery it gives off a three piece. So I have found it to be an extremely effective set. Now, one thing I have seen some people do is they run endurance only on the back bar, and instead instead of running the one trainee like I do, they'll run one willpower here and then run two, uh, willpower staff on the front bar to give them willpower three piece on the front bar and endurance three piece on the back bar saying okay well we want the endurance on the back bar when it's needed and we want the willpower on the front bar to give us more offense and the reason i personally am not a fan of that is because i do not like my health jumping around from one bar to the next um it has the potential to if you you know swap to your back bar at the wrong time or if you swap around at the wrong time you could actually put yourself into execute range uh and you know basically increase the amount of damage that uh, certain executes are going to do to you uh, just by simply swapping to your defensive bar. So that is just not something I'm ever a big fan of. Um, I always just prefer to have the endurance on both bars. Also, truthfully, I, I believe that the health recovery is really good on both bars, even if you don't need it on your front bar as much, Like, and, and it makes more sense to have it be its strongest on its back bar. I do think you kind of need it on that front bar just because it allows you to stay offensive longer. You're allowed, You're able to stay in the fight longer, and you're able to you know keep fighting with the flame lash uh heals the burning embers heals you're able to stay on that front offensive bar longer with the health recovery ticking every second and you don't need to fall back onto that defensive bar to just smash coag constantly and especially with how bad healing is i don't know for me i prefer to just have the health recovery on both bars um but this is what I'm running gear-wise, and set-wise has been working really, really well for me. In terms of our uh, traits, though, we are running, I have to check, it is uh, one, two, three, four pieces of impen. I am running two pieces of sturdy and one piece of reinforced on my chest for that maximum armor. We are running a one light, one medium, and five heavy setup. We are running three prismatics and four magicka glyphs. Uh, gives us that nice 17k stam. We are running one spell damage and two magicka recovery with triple arcane. I'm a huge fan of arcane on magicka dragon knight, so that is what I'm running. For our front bar, we are running a charged inferno staff of endurance with a berserker glyph. And on the back bar, we are running a powered axe of endurance just to kind of help boost our coag healing a little bit with uh, an Absorb Magicka Glyph back here and then a sturdy Maximum Magicka Shield just to allow us to block a little bit more efficiently on that back bar. Now, in terms of our skills, on our front bar, we are, of course, running Flame Lash. I am a huge fan of Flame Lash, especially in the current meta. Um, I know some people still love Molten Whip, but for me, I feel that Magic of DK needs all of the healing that it could possibly get, and I also just vastly prefer the Flame Lash playstyle and the tempo of gameplay that it brings. So it's you basically lash an enemy for instant damage, and if you strike an enemy that is immobilized or stunned, which we have two ways to do that via our stun with Fossilize and our root with Talons, uh, you basically turn this skill into Power Lash, dealing more damage and giving you a nice heal over two seconds. And this going to occur every three seconds. Just really allows you to brawl it out between Flame Lash, Burning Embers, uh, Coag, in, and Endurance. We are able to keep ourselves basically in the fight, brawling it out for a long period of time. And Flame Lash is a huge reason that you're able to do that. It allows you to make your offensive pushes, also defensive pushes, which is just basically one of the reasons that I love this skill so much. Um... We also, like I said, do pair it with Burning Embers. Now, Burning Embers does have a nice long duration now because of Elf Bane. So you slash an enemy for 4k damage instantly and then 18.7k flame damage over 19 seconds, healing you for 94% of the damage inflicted when it ends. And this also does apply <clears throat> the Burning Status effect. 
uh, to basically give us a magic return, effectively lowering the skills cost by 500. Now, actually, that does remind me, though, I do want to address it. People, I always end up getting asked in these build videos, why do I run charge? Now, charge increases the chance to apply the status effect by 220%. Now, anytime you deal flame damage from any source, you have a chance to apply burning. And with Magic of Dragon Knight, every chance that you do, uh, every time you do apply burning, you are able to get Magicka back from combustion through 500 Magicka. So we are able to run extremely low recovery. I only run 1100 Magicka recovery on this build. And with combustion being a main driver of my sustain, I'm able to get a lot of effective recovery from it. Um, but I just wanted to talk about that with Burning Embers. But Burning Embers is one of our primary single target dots. Uh, gives us a nice heal. We apply it to multiple people. We get the heals coming in over time. Uh, if you strike an enemy with it again, it will also refresh, giving you a heal for any damage it's done. So really big fan of the skill. Very strong single target dot. We, of course, have Fossilize. Fossilize being one of the better stuns in the game. Stunning somebody for three seconds, dealing magic damage when ends, also immobilizing them. This can't be blocked or dodged. Combos really, really well. Flame Lash, you're able to Fossilize someone into a Power Lash, giving you a nice big damage and a big heal. Just one of the best CCs in the game and why I absolutely recommend using it. Um, if you were using Multi Whip, you might be able to get away with Shattering Rocks, but for a Flame Lash build, you absolutely want to use Fossilize. We also are running Elemental Drain, which now gives us a crap load of penetration ever since... Uh, Major Breach got buffed, so we now get nearly 6k pen from this for 23 seconds. But the big thing is that we do get the Minor Magic of Steel, giving us 168 Magicka every second when damaging our enemy, giving us an effective 320 Magicka, uh, or excuse me, three, like around 340 Magicka recovery. So very, very good skill. Extremely important, in my opinion, to Magicka Dragon Knight's success. Um, that's why I've not, never been a big fan, especially as of the last couple of patches running double sword and board or dual wield sword and board, because I just feel that elemental drain enables too much damage and too much sustain to not run it. So that is why personally I'm a big fan of it and will always see it on my Magic of Dragon Knight builds. We also are running Burning Talons, giving us a 6.5k initial flame damage uh, tick when we use it, and dealing nearly 15k flame damage over 9 seconds. That's a very, very, very hefty dot. Um, so we also get an Immobilize from this, so it allows us to proc Power Lash more frequently. We are not just relying on Fossilize for our Power Lashes or others. We're able to get it through this as well, thus increasing our healing throughput. But it just gives us a really, really, really hefty dot. So between a Burning Status Effect, Burning Embers, Burning Talons, Degeneration, Volatile Armor, we got plenty of dots ticking on people, and we are really going to be able to rot our opponents down. I am running Ferocious Leap. I know some people are not the biggest fan of Ferocious Leap uh, at, you know, the last couple patches. I still love it. Number one, it's a Draconic Power Skill, giving us more health recovery. Number two, it looks cool as hell. Number three, I really like the offensive-defensive nature of it. You know, you're able to deal that instantaneous damage. You get a really, really hefty shield. It's a gap closer, helping us kind of stay on our opponents. I just absolutely love the skill, and I love everything about it. So even with Elfbane, I know some people swear by standard, but I still think Ferocious Leap is the way to go. If you want to go with Shifting Standard, you absolutely can, but I personally do prefer Ferocious Leap. Now, on the back bar, we are, of course, running Degeneration, giving us a 14k dot over 12 seconds, but we mostly have this for the Major Sorcery, increasing our spell damage by 20% for 24 seconds. Now, this is our flex spot here. Um, I've been experimenting with a couple of different skills here. I've tried Cauterize. I've tried Flames of Oblivion. I've tried Draw Essence. You could also potentially try Engulfing Flames here as well. Um, if you want another dot, you want to increase the damage, but I don't know personally I don't know if other people have experienced this. I have found the Noxious Breath and Engulfing Flames cones to somehow be even worse in this patch. It just, I, man, this thing just feels like it never lands. Even if I do all the usual tricks, the step back, the this, that, it just, it just feels like a disaster. Um, but it is a really good skill, even with Elfbane, because you do get that dot take over 20 seconds and you are getting that 10 percent flame damage increase so that is really really nice um and you, so you can really use like i said cauterize flames of oblivion draw essence engulfing flames here this is really your flex spot um and you can kind of do whatever you want i actually experimented with draw essence a couple of times and i do really like it um you can combo draw essence into leap really really nice so you get two big bursts of damage um even though it does have a pretty hefty cost i like you know this did get buffed a couple of patches ago so it gives us a nice amount of healing now and you know you do get a good percentage of the skills cost restored when you actually hit someone so i've actually been really liking using it so far um but again you could use any one of those four skills that i have mentioned here uh coagulating blood is there going to be our primary burst heal staying cost an arm and a leg to cast it's getting buffed a little it's gotten buffed a little bit it's a bit better now um but you know 
it's still coag, uh, but it is a lot better than it used to be. Now, major fortitude increases our health recovery by 40% for 20 seconds, which means that when we pop coag on that back bar, we are at 2,600 health recovery. So let me tell you, I know some people don't necessarily think the health recovery is the best. It, it is a lot better than you think. It was something that I slept on back when I tried it and when I you know was you know kind of trying to figure out how I wanted to get around the healing changes without having to lean too heavily into proc sets. Um, co going into health recovery was my answer, and Coag just really, really helps with it. We also, of course, have Ultile Armor. This is just our armor buff, also giving us another dot. Allows Burning Heart to be up at all times from the Draconic Power passives. Um, you're basically increasing your healing received by 12%, so that makes it so that it's always active. You deal some damage when people hit you with a melee attack. Uh, just really, really good. I am still running wings. I know some people hate wings. I know some people swear they don't want to run it, but I still do. Um, this skill's bad. Let's just be honest, it is, but it's kind of like the best of what we have. I've tried running uh, Race Against Time here. I don't like it personally just simply because I'm only really gaining the... I'm not gaining, like, one of the biggest parts of it. I have Race Against Time. Uh, yes, Race Against Time. Um, like, you do gain the Major Expedition for four seconds, and you do get the Snare and Immobilization Immunity for two seconds, but, like, the Minor Force is basically completely lost on you, you know? So I, like, not in the, exactly not the biggest fan of it, um, especially when Wings is a Draconic power skill too, just playing into our health recovery strategy a little bit more as well. And I know some people, they don't run a Snare and Immobilization Immunity at all on Magic and DK, and they'll go for the Damage Wings. And while that is a viable strategy, if you want to go that way, it's personally not something I'm ever a big fan of. I like to be able to move, even if it's only for a little while. So I still do run Protective Plate. I also am still a firm believer that this should be four seconds or it should be uh, given a third skill. Or like a third bonus because it's as far as i know still the only movement skill that gives two seconds of snare and root immunity it doesn't have three effects so just something i'm hoping for one day but for now it's what we use because it's the best of our options at least in my opinion uh and then finally we have temporal guard in the back bar for minor protection reducing our damage taken by five percent i don't really feel i need a back bar alt on this build so i just run this for some extra damage mitigation if you do want to though you can absolutely feel free to run spell wall spell wall is another really good one um letting you block for no cost and reflecting all projectiles is also a really good skill as well so you can run uh, either one of these and be perfectly fine in terms of our race, I am running a Bratton. I still do believe Bratton is the way to go just because it offers a boatload of sustain. And so it just makes it something I really don't have to be concerned with. So absolutely do recommend running Bratton. In terms of stats, we're looking at 36K magic on the front bar and almost 38K on that back bar. We got 31.5K health. Uh, we got 17k maximum stam, absolutely great stamina number. We got 1123 magic recovery. Yes, that is what I play actually with the magic recovery. Some people always tell me there's no way I play with it that low, but even I, I always do. Uh, 1900 health recovery on the front bar, going up to uh, 2050 on the back bar. We got 2000 spell damage. Uh, you know, again, this is I think the 36k maximum magic and 2k spell damage in a heavy armor build is really really nice especially when you consider the fact that Elfbane is one of the biggest drivers of damage for us with uh, Burning Talons, with Grothdar. Malakath is also not going to be shown on tooltips, so that is all stuff that can't really be seen on the stat sheet that's giving us bonus. Spell crit, we literally don't even care about. Like, we have 14% spell crit on the front and back bar. It's pathetically low, so I, like, basically assume I'm not going to crit at all. Uh, we got 21k uh, spell resist, 15k physical resist, and on the back bar it goes up to 24 and a half with 18 of five, and then we got tw about 2,700 crit resist. I'm running the Apprentice Mundus for extra spell damage. Uh, this only gives us a small critical bonus, so you don't have to worry too much about that. I am running Bewitched Sugar Skulls for the maximum health, stamina, and magicka, and health recovery. This it You cannot run regular tristat food. You basically need Bewitched Sugar Skulls because it gives nearly it gives 400 health recovery, so it's a really, really key component to the build. Um, in terms of potion, I am running tri-stat pots. I just run plain old tri-stat pots. They are my favorite to run. Um, and then in terms of champion points, uh, 23 into Blessed, 56 into Elemental Expert. I run zero into Elfborn. You don't basically crit on this build at all, so you literally do not need this. 44 into Spell Erosion, 
just to one more note, I used to have a summon here for defensive crit, but again, ever since they lowered the crit given from CP, you just literally don't need points here. Uh, 72 into Master in Arms, 75 into Thaumaturge to give us also Exploiter, increasing our damage done against off-balance enemies by 10%. Uh, also, Thaumaturge is great because we do run a very dot-heavy spec, so it's really, really good for us. 66 into Ironclad, 31 into Resistant, 44 into Thick Skinned, 49 into Hardy, 43 into Elemental Defender, and 37 into Quick Recovery. We got 1 into Siphoner, 56 into Warlord, 75 into Arcanist, 32 into Healthy, 40 into Tumbling, and 66 into Shadow Ward. Now, I mean, in terms of a rough um, rotation, the biggest thing that you need to make sure that you're doing when you're playing a Magic of Dragonite, it's all about buff and debuff maintenance. You want to make sure that you maintain degeneration, volatile armor, burning embers, and elemental drain on your opponents. If you do not maintain those things, your damage and healing output is going to be a lot lower than it could be. Uh, you, you know, when you're going in on your opponents, you know, you want to be sure to root them, get that dot ticking, get the power lash going. Uh, if you want to go for a big burst of damage, you could pop Draw Essence. Then you can go into a Leap right afterwards, get both of those to hit at the same time. You could also be sure Fossilize, hit the Power Lashes, Fossilize into Leap. You know, lots of different combinations you can do in terms of your burst based on what's available at the time. When you do need to defensively kite, I recommend hitting that Protective Plate, going into your block, hitting Coag. If you have a lot of enemies around you, hit that Draw Essence as well. Um, you could also use Temporal Guard to do some tricky plays if you need to. If you need to want to, you know, jump off of a tower, press Temporal Guard, go back up. If it decides to work that day, you could absolutely do that as well. Uh, lots of different options for just a, you know, for a rotation. But the general thought process when you are playing Magic and Dragon Knight is you want to maintain those buffs, maintain those debuffs, you know, block defensively on that back bar. And then go in for offensive burst plays with a combination of Fossilize, Ferocious Leap, and Degeneration with Hitting Power Lash when you get it to proc. But guys, that is going to be it for me today for my updated Enduring Flame build. If you guys do want to see the written version of this build, please check it out over on DotsGaming.com. Link should hopefully be in the description below of this video. Uh, if you guys do want to see more content from Nemesis Esports, you can feel free to subscribe to their channel. I will be releasing some more builds here for the Markarth patch, and they do release a ton of other great gaming content that you can absolutely check out as well. But I appreciate you guys stopping by their channel today and giving them a bit of your time. Thank you for checking it out. And uh, yeah, like I said, if you guys want to check out the written version, take a look over on DOSGaming.com. So thank you all very much. I appreciate it, and have a wonderful day.